everybody. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome to the Transatlantic Rebels podcast, where we talk about movies, TV shows, music, books, and occasional bonus features on cryptocurrency, world affairs, and more. In-depth reviews for deeper minds from both sides of the Atlantic. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to this episode of the Transatlantic Rebels podcast. My name is Jessel and my co-host is Rashad. This time we're going to be talking, oh my God, I keep getting the name wrong. I keep saying, oh my God, it's Margaret, but it's not. It's are you are there, you God? God? It's me, it's me Margaret. comma, Margaret, full stop. <laughs> Had you ever oh read the God, book? It's so it's based, oh it's my based God, on, it's Margaret. I read the book, yeah, I read the book when I was a kid. I'd never even heard of the book. So it's from 1970, before it predates us by a long way. So is it a good book? Yes, yeah, a great book. Okay, it must be because this is a great film. Spoiler alert, this is a great film. Do you know what? I, I don't, let's not even have like a spoiler section. Just the yeah, whole thing is going a spoiler to section. Judy yeah. Bloom is one of the great children's writers, man. Okay. Yeah. I, I, don't know how much, I don't know how much you guys are aware of it over in the UK, but in America, she's been like one of those premier ones. Like, a, like a writer, it's like a writer passage for a certain generation. My generation in America, it's like read her books. No, I mean, I'd never heard of her, to yeah. be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it must be quite like an American centric. Yeah. 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 Judging from this film, it's very American centric, yes. obviously. Like, it's not like an easily translatable thing. But Yeah. Okay. So we've got a. She refused to sell this novel for 49 years and then eventually did sell the screenplay yes. to, uh, to Kelly Freeman Craig and James L. Brooks. Now, James legend. L. Brooks, legend. <laughs> My God, the things he's done. And like, what I love about him is he just takes time. Like, He'll just take seven years. He's a quality years. guy. He's quality over quantity. Yeah. He will only do something if it's worth it, yes. generally. like Obviously, the odd misstep here and there. But For the most like, part. He will, he's very selective. And the fact that he's produced this and he's so closely attached to it, he didn't direct it, obviously. Let's just get that yes. clear. Kelly Freeman Craig has done that. Um, I didn't see the first film that she did, which was... Oh, that one is excellent. She's I tried to watch it this week, so I was like, I bet Rashad is going to tell me to watch it. So I was like, yeah. let me try and watch it. I just got... Haley no Steinfeld is outstanding in that movie. So that's called The Edge of 17. Right? Yes. And it's got, it's yes. got Hayley Steinfeld and Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson, actually. Yes. Yeah. And they're both so in it. It's on Netflix in the UK anyway, so yes. I'm definitely going to watch it. But Yeah, we should talk about yeah. that one too. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I hope to watch it and then we could sort of incorporate it into this, but, yeah. but I'll, no, not, not, not yet. Anyway, I went and watched this at the cinema... Uh, Cineworld had it as Cineworld Unlimited thingy, like the free thing that they do for their pass holders. But they're obviously not showing it in the actual normal, like weekly cycle, which is so annoying. Yeah. But I'm glad that I went and saw it as a one off because my God, it is good. Like Rashad, like messaged me and said, Yo, have you heard of this film? I was like, No. And, and then, like, just from what I don't know what he said, but the feeling was that it was absolute fire. Yeah. I was like, Okay. Yeah. Okay. I did see yeah. the trailer for it actually. So I thought, okay, all right. So I went and watched it, and yeah, it, it was. I can see it's got ninety nine percent freshness on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, even though it doesn't matter as well, or even but you know why I got that? Even that there's what? No, no, I'm saying I was like, even though these Rotten Tomatoes things shouldn't matter. In a, oh no, but run, I mean, but yeah. if it's got ninety nine, that that's matters. a quality. That's not a quality. That's, that's like that's like yeah, yeah it, it must be of a certain level. It has to be. Yeah, whether I like it or not is different, but in terms of quality level, it has to be. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's where it that's where it comes in handy for sure. <laughs> if it's got ninety nine or above, yeah. So let me ask you a question to somebody who didn't know the story. So when you first sat there and watched it, like, what was your reaction going through the whole movie? Well, I had seen the trailer, so I was like, okay, this is a coming of age thing. But I kind of I forget trailers anyway nowadays, which is good. The the way that it takes a young girl moving and her family, uh, that was I thought what it was going to be. It was all pretty kind of like prosaic coming of age kind of thing. Just done really well. What was fascinating was the religion angle was brilliant. The extra, you know, the in-laws or the uh, Rachel McAdams parents or like, what would you call it? I think Margaret's grandmother is just hilarious. Like the Jewish grandmother. Just she, she got the biggest laughs actually throughout the film. Generally, like she just, (laughs) No, that was Kathy Bates. I mean, Kathy Bates. Right? Kathy Bates. Kathy Bates. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Kathy Bates. Just oh my god, she. She's a chameleon, man. I would. Yes, she, she could do anything. She could do anything. Yeah, she really can. She's just brilliant. And I, I, I'm not a religious guy, but this like navigating through various religions was very, very cleverly done. But mostly, I just think it was so 
funny. Yeah, it, there was obviously emotion there, but it was very funny. And it was so snappy as well. It just seemed, it flew by. Uh, scene flew by. cut, scene cut. Yeah, absolutely flew by. I think that was like the secret source of this film. They just, it was so tightly edited and they did not waste a moment really. Yes. Like, and that was, I think that was what the real secret source of this film was. It was like, the, you, you never sat through a moment. It was like, why are we doing this? What are we doing here? Yeah. Because also like, you know, I mean, we've done a podcast on Guardians of the Galaxy 3 and bless that film. Brilliant. Love it. But it's, it's like two and a half hours, like a proper full two and a half hours. Right. And, not every film you want to see is two and a half hours long. You know what I mean? It's like sometimes give me an hour and a half of just pure quality and just let that be. And that's cool. Uh, so this is this is just brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And the audience reaction, I have to say, was brilliant to it as well. Like, And, and it had a complete mix of people. It had like older people, younger people, everyone. And everyone seemed to love it. This should be one of the biggest hits of the year if it got like if they knew how to market it to other people or something like that. Because I remember the, the the director was on Twitter. She's like, it's tough getting people to see us when we're in between like John Wick and Marvel right. and stuff like that. She was like, but I'm glad she's happy that people are act genuinely loving the movie. So in the long run, she knows that it's going to be beloved. But she also is kind of like sad that she wishes that like it it got more success out the gate. But it's going to be one of those things where once people see it, they're going to be, oh my God. Because I can't imagine. Like to me, this is one of the movies where it's like, it's good for young boys and young girls to see to see that thing right there. And like for young boys to see, like it'll give them more like, they're like, this is what girls go yeah, through. Yeah, 100%. And it's not pandering, not saying guys suck at this and that. It's just like, this is what girls go through. Maybe you should think about that a little bit more. No, it's making them understand stuff because I, I would 100%, when my boys are old enough, I would show them, yes. show them this film, you know, just, just because I wish we'd had films like this growing up. It would have, I mean, I went to a boy's school my whole life. I didn't know anything about girls until I was 19 and that was limited at best, right? So if I'd seen films like this, then it would have been really useful, which shows in anyone who's ever met me <laughs> before. But yeah, this it's it's fantastic. It's educational, entertaining, and it just whizzes by. So I can see once it hits, and it's honest, and it feels honest, and it feels it's honest. honest. It doesn't feel like it's dumbing down kids. It's not dumbing down the kids. Uh, even the religious angle as well. I just love the religious angle because they treat you, they treat the kid as a grown up kind of thing, or not a grown up, but someone who is growing up and. Is making the decisions herself through her own. And she's experience. not stupid. And she's not stupid. Yeah, she's yeah. not stupid. And this is the second time I've seen her in in in, in, in a certain type of movie. Like she was in the first two Ant Man movies. She's this yeah. one. Like she's going to be if she continues along this path, doing these performances as a kid. She keeps that quality as an adult. That's going to be crazy. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to put that kind of pressure on her, but she just did a great great job in this film. Even her friend, like her friend, was brilliant in this as well. Actually. Um, there wasn't a bad performance in the movie, to be honest with you. No, there wasn't. And of course, Rachel McCann's McCam, always going to be Rachel McAdams. She's always going to knock out the course. No, I, I was going to spend a good time talking about her. Yeah, I know, I'll wait for you to come to that. I, I love her. I just, oh my God, I love her so much. I would watch anything with Rachel McAdams in it. Like, literally. Has she, has, she, has, she, has she ever done a bad performance? Have you ever seen her do I a bad know. performance? I don't know. I saw someone tweeting about her the other day, a few weeks ago, and they were like, I think it was Matt Nellier, actually, the really famous film critic guy on yeah. Twitter. And and he was just he sort of put up like a list of like eight of her films, and he was just like, "Are any of these bad? Like, has Rachel McAdams like, or wh how would you rank these?" And basically, the replies were like, "She's great in all of these." Yes. Yeah, like I've never seen know, anything. Yeah, she, she's so underrated. Yes, she should be. She should be as she should be as respected as Rachel Weisz. In That's what she should be at. With that point, yeah, right there. I mean, I'm pretty sure like among actors, she's on that level. But as far as the mainstream, she should be on that level. In a sense, yeah. But but she's just a chameleon, like yes. a chameleon. She could do anything. Like she literally did Doctor Strange and did this. She had fun doing Doctor Strange and she did something like this that's so humanistic and stuff like that. And then she could and then she could do like and you think about you go all the way back in time, you think about what she did in in, in uh in um in uh Bean Girl. It's like that's crazy. That's all the same actor. And she was an adult. I mean, she's had some iconic roles. And she was an adult and like she was an adult her. doing Mean Girl. She wasn't a teenager, she was an adult doing that role. Bro, she did Mean Girls and The Notebook in the same year in 2004. <laughs> that's that's wild. Yes. Yeah. That is yeah. Mean Girls and The Notebook in yes. 2004. Yes. You know, but she's had some some really iconic roles. Uh, she's done some wild shit as well, in fairness, like the Eurovision Song Contest film. <laughs> I mean, it, no, I think after that year when she did those rom com, when that, 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 that the romantic stuff, I was kind of like, to me, I'm like, okay. 
But but she's really good at that kind of stuff. No, like, she's good. Like, I, I, like, I don't I don't doubt that she's good. Yeah, I think that the premise of the movies, I'm like, okay. she was in True Detective as well, wasn't she? Oh, I didn't see that one yet. Yeah, I heard she was good in that one. What the, the first? Se- you've never seen this first season of True the second Detective? the second season the second season. I never seen any of. Them. Oh my god! First, the first season of True Detective is one of the best TV shows. You said the second one was kind of shaky, and then the third one when Mahershala Ali got back to form. Yeah, I quit like um, after the uh, about three or four episodes into season two. I was like, I'm done with this because season one was one of my favorite things I've ever seen in my whole life. It's that good. I heard that. Heard about that. Yeah, and they said yeah, yeah. season two dropped the ball, and they said that three pulled it back. Yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah, I, and, I will come back to that one day. And then the one with Jodie Foster is supposed to be great. So who knows? We'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah. Let's get back. But yeah. I mean, getting back to Rachel McAdams. Yeah. Um, oh, she just, she's just so good. She she's so believable as well. And she's just got this like she's naturalistic. She's a naturalistic actor. Yeah, and she's got this warmth to her that just draws people to her. I mean, ever since the notebook, to be honest, right? I mean, she's been in this mm. game twenty years now. So and and what I love as well is is seeing like especially if you talk about things like Marvel, in the old days when we were growing up, they would cast really young actresses as the mum. Like the the mum would in reality be like five years older than whoever the protagonist, the male protagonist was, like yeah. the son or whatever. Mm-hmm. Now, like they're actually casting women in their forties, yeah, <laughs> the actual age, the actual age, yeah, yeah, as the actual age of the person, which is good, you know, yeah. So, and that makes it even more believable for for things like, are you get, are, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. Because yes. if that was made in the nineties, I guarantee you they would. Oh yeah, someone, Jesus Christ, they if would have picked like, like a thirty year old actress, like hundred percent, like a Jennifer Lawrence type. Yeah, <laughs> and, oh my God, hundred percent. It would have been Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the main reason I wanted us to do this podcast because I want as many people to see it as possible. Like, I'm pretty sure what it, by the end of the year, people will adore it. But I just wish that people, as much as I'm happy for Guardians of the Galaxy and stuff like that, I always also want stuff like this to do well. So, yeah, and I hope it gets like a, a really good streaming service. Um, yeah, like, like I don't HBO know, I don't or know something who made like it. Like, well, yeah. yeah, or Netflix or Disney Plus or something because yeah. Disney Plus is getting some really good films, right? Yeah, Disney. It would it would, it would, it would clean up with Disney Plus, man. If they just put yeah. that on a front screen, it would clean up, man. Oh, yeah, you're right. Even with like, you know, Disney Pluses for the kids and stuff like that. Like, yeah, yeah it would smash it. Absolutely. You could do like a double feature with that and Turning Red. You know what? Yeah, Turning Red. Um, I think that I read something about Turning Red and they were inspired by, what was it? Oh, I'll come, it'll come back to me. But they were inspired by something really that we were talking about recently. Um, I don't know. I'll have to Google it and come back to it. But yeah, it, this would go really well with that, actually. Very well. Yeah. But anyway, it was just a quick podcast on this one, like Rashad said. And check it out if you haven't seen it. We haven't actually told you pretty much anything in any spoiler territory, to be honest, about this film. So if you haven't seen it, definitely go watch it and let us know what you think. Because it's top, top quality. Really, really good. So it's goodbye from Rashad and it's goodbye from me. Peace. Peace.